Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you'd like to find me online to buy any of my products or look at my other things, I'm at CanadianCreations.etsy.com, ThePayArt.etsy.com, and ArtCreations.etsy.com. And if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a uh, rose and blossom picture and um, it's really an easy design. It's a very limited palette. It's not very big. I'm going to have to move some things around here. Hopefully you can see everything. I usually use just uh, any green that you prefer. I think this one's hunter green. I've got berry wine. I've got school bus yellow and white. And that will pretty well do everything. Um, surprisingly, <laughs> I just have an assortment of paintbrushes. You find what works for you. I mean, I just have some flats and some and finer chipped ones and a little bit of everything, I guess. I find it's to your preference. We're going to start with a little white, a little red, or a little berry wine. Now, this is similar to a one-stroke design. Um, I've seen this design way back when, and I just kind of altered it to what I like. Is that my color? And that's all I do is blend back and forth. Um, a lot of things I just put my own twist on it and make it how I like it, so <laughs> it's not true to being one-stroke sometimes. Now, this design, um, I like to start it with a lot of berry wine on it, because you're going to build it up with some lighter colors. So this design kind of uh, turns out to be a nice light pink in the end, but I'm hoping you can see me okay. Now we're just going to make a pretty rose shape. I'm going to be on here with a video or more a week. I'm going to be doing uh, regular canvas art, uh, mini and large, and I will be also doing different, uh, whoops, <laughs> good start, glass painting. I can actually fill that in. And I will uh, be doing dishware as well. I like to paint pretty well everything you can think of, so there's not many things I find that aren't fair game. I have a lot of really nice butter dishes that I do. Um, I have a, a big assortment of things I think that you would uh, probably be very interested in. If you go on my shop online, my hand-painted items is at uh, Canadian Creations, that's with a Z at the end, dot Etsy dot com. You'll see some of the things I have coming, or you can also make requests in the comments. Um, I'm not really used to making a ton of videos. I've been offline for a while. I've been very ill, but I'm back, so I'm fine. It's all good. Um, so for me, I uh, just kind of when it, when it comes to canvas paintings, I like having a set design I go from. But when it comes to things like this, I just like to be whimsical and fun and just go with it. You know, I think it's, uh, so these are all just basic ovals and just, you know, funky shapes. Nothing perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Now, I always say on my shop that um, I'm going to have these close in to each other. That my designs are different every time. They're always unique. And I think that's very important. If I try to do it to a T, it just doesn't turn out as nice. <laughs> and to be honest, I, I find it needs a little bit of its own character to be. And again, I'm just reloading. I'm going to uh, just do some smaller ones here, maybe. Just little. And again, no specific this or that. It's a, a very unfussy design, especially in the start. I like to put a little bit up here too. Now these are just going to be kind of half the size because you're going to display out like a half of one. And then I'm going to quickly do the other side. I will leave you on to do this, but um, maybe I'll start here. And like I said, I, I don't want everything to match exactly. I just want a general design. It, it, it's similar on each side. And when I do it, I do it similar. It's never the same, but it's a similar design. Now this one is just roses and any kind of blossoms. 
I change up the blossom color. I'm just going to do white today, um, as it's for a uh, specific order. Um, but I also, I, I do them with blue blossoms. You know, it's quite pretty with purple or blue. You name it. You can pretty well switch it up however you want. It's not, um, like I said, it's a very unfussy design. It's something you can just enjoy yourself, relax, and and feel a little rhythmic about. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, like I said, it's your design. You just uh, do it how you want. Don't let anybody tell you it's right or wrong. <laughs> I think I'm going to maybe just go with that. Oh, maybe. Maybe one more little one. Right. Here. Yeah, I think that's good. So now, I usually do a few coats on these. Um, you want it to be at least somewhat um, thick. It's very transparent right now. Now, the thing with painting with gloss is if it's too thick, it's not going to work right. It'll just pack off when you wash it. If it's too thin, it'll just come off. So there's a fine line between the two. And you have to be very careful that you find the happy medium. That just comes with practice. It's just something that happens over time. I find myself, um, I've been doing this a really long time. <laughs> it's trial and error. But, you know, I think it's like anything. Once you get the feel for something, it becomes uh, what you want. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. Like I said, just go over. It doesn't have to be exact. Nothing perfect. You're just going to basically go over what you did, just lightly. Uh, you could probably wait for this to dry a little more. I mean, if I weren't showing you, I might give it a little more time. But I want to make sure you still got lots of berry wine to keep it a little dark so you can highlight it. And, like I said, we're just going to... Hopefully you're seeing all this okay. That's all I'll know later when I look at the video. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah. And like I said, if there's something you'd like to see, even if you don't see it in my shop, um, I always love uh, ideas. You know, a lot of times I, I just can't think of something. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm done with ideas, and I just kind of take a break with my ideas, and wait until something comes to me or something inspires me. Like I said, this is similar to a design I saw way back when. Not, a, not the same whatsoever, but uh, just a blossom um, jug. Like I said, you can do this design so many different ways and it'll still look nice. Oops, there we go. See, that's what happens when you've got a little dribble of, I must have a little too much water in my brush, hopefully not. But then, um, with these designs, it's uh, all about just kind of letting it uh, become what it's going to on its own. It's very whimsical. It's not specific, it's whimsical, it's fun. And if you, oops, I got a little yellow in there. If you take the pressure off yourself and just have fun with it, it usually turns out much better. Now with this bottom layer, it's just to make a base. You can see how messy I'm doing it. It's very messy. Very. And it's just a big splotch of paint all together here. No rhyme or reason. So, but, you know, I like to maybe add a little white, a little red, and just mush it in there. I don't want it to be uh, too dark. I mean, too light yet, as I need to lighten it. Yeah. And you're just going to want either ovals, rounds, or kind of half shapes. Any of those will work. You'll see what I mean. See as I start putting petals on. Now with this, I uh, I do all the roses, and then after that, I uh, I work on just whatever blossoms I'm going to put on, whatever color they are. Um, usually I let the roses dry, but I think I'll be okay. Just to look about here today. Yeah, if I got everybody, I think so. Okay, so I'm just gonna. 
Give me. There we go. Brush is washed. Going to start again. So here I am going to get to definitely white and the berry wine, and I'm not going to rub it off a lot. I'm just not going to mix it really well. Just enough, just tiny, tiny bit, just a smidge. And then I'm going to start making some shapes. So we're going to start with the outer petals, and then I'm going to go again. And you're going to start making a bit of a circle in there, a bit of a C shape. But you need it to show up. There you go. Now I find, like I said, you've just got to kind of go with it. There's not some specific, oh, do this, do that. Now I'm just squishing it in and making a C shape. You've seen these designs before. All over the place, but, you know, I think it's... um. Such a basic design, but once you mix it with everything else, it really starts to come together. Um, as I was saying before about making sure that you have a, a lot of paint, or enough paint, on your item. Um, like I said, it, you know, it can be a very transparent paint. You can see right through it if you don't have enough, and it doesn't look very nice. When the light is not hitting the front, it's hitting the back, coming through, it won't look very good. So. So I'm going to have all my roses facing this way or straight up. So, like I said, you're just going to kind of do the C shape. I like to have a little extra blob of white on the end. It just kind of makes it work. See? There we go. Now I could be fussier and do a more realistic rose and whatnot. And I have other designs that I do that. But this one, no. I like it to stay whimsical. I like it to stay fun. And, uh... You know, I find it's better not to go over them too many times like I'm doing. Um, sometimes if you do that, the paint can start coming off when it's wet like this. But right now, when you've got a design like this, you can also do a lot of covering with, um, say, different uh, leaves or other flowers. So don't worry about that too much. Okay, we're just going to keep going with it. And again, hoping I'm... Uh, Showing up enough here so you can see what I'm doing. I really hope you try this. Like I said, it's like one, two, three, four colors you use. And uh, it can just turn out so pretty. I mean, you can practice like little rose shapes on their own um, before you go on here if you want. I'm going to have some videos where there's no words, me not talking, so you can have a break. <laughs> and I'll have, you know, some uh, speed painting videos as well for people that don't want to go through the whole lesson. Um, my miniature paintings, they're fun. They, they, they don't take a lot of time to watch or try to do. So if you're uh, feeling um, intimidated by a larger painting, I think the minis uh, really kind of give you a little more freedom. You're not as worried about wrecking everything when it's, you know, really big. It's hard to know if it's going to turn out how you want. You get nervous. <laughs> so. I think it's the same with the, these type of things. Um, now I use probably more expensive glassware and whatnot than I used to. And uh, dishes, but, you know, I, I used to just get things just from the dollar store. See? So you can just wipe it off if it's not right. <laughs> At least until it's dried and cured. Gives you that leeway of uh, making a mess. See? I've been doing this for years and I still screw up. But I can guarantee you, in the end, it's going to look nice. It'll look pretty. At least I think so. I've sold so many. So I think that kind of tells me that it works. <laughs> and that it looks okay. I'm doing something right. Oops. There we go. So about me, I'm a um, mother and a wife. And uh, I pretty well like to make sure I live life to the fullest. I've been dealing with cancer for a few years now. And, you know, if anybody out there has cancer, you know, it really takes a toll on your life. I made some videos in the past, um, quite a while ago, and then I got really sick since then. <laughs> but I'm going to make some more videos. Um, so if you yourself or anyone you know is going through cancer, please feel free to watch my upcoming videos just to help with uh, basic mental health. That's uh, mostly, I think, that's a huge part of it. So. 
but back to the painting. Painting is something that I have a passion for in every way. I, I just can't imagine life without painting. And it's helped me through so many things. I've always sketched, um, but the actual painting I hadn't done as much as I would have liked through the years. But it became something I had time to do after. Uh, when I stayed home with my son when he was little, I started, you know, actually getting into my art again, which had been, you know, something I always had a passion for. And it's funny, most people stop things when they have their children, and I started, so when he'd go to bed at night, my hubby worked um, at midnight, so he used to leave quite early, and it was, at a, it was out of town. So I had a lot of alone time when my son was little. Yeah, oops, big boo boo there. I'm not used to painting sideways. <laughs> uh, that'll be okay for now. And sometimes if your brush seems too gloopy, just give it a wipe. You don't even need the water, because you definitely don't want water affecting your painting here. But yeah, so I um, just played around with some painting. I, I got some, uh, actually I started it with some ragu jars spaghetti sauce jars and I didn't want to spend much money until I kind of got the hang of what I was doing and I painted those and the next thing you know I started painting some other things and it was like oh this is fun you know I hadn't really done much painting on um, glass or wear or anything ever but that was a long time ago it was a lot different then too and a lot harder to uh to get um the paint on and stay you had to go through a lot of different um procedures <laughs> and certain paint mediums you had to put on and whatnot. Now you just you got this one paint right here and put it on and you bake it and you're good to go. So okay. Again it's a little bit of a weird angle for me. If I was painting a picture it'd be different, but I'm not. If it were canvas I'd be straight ahead, but here I'm a little bit angled, so I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing, and I'm hoping I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> but like I said, you're just basically going over it with some fun little strokes. And the more you do, the more comfortable you get. And you'll start noticing, uh, definitely, that you just start getting a rhythm going, and you find it enjoyable. I think it's something you've just got to keep practicing. Like I said, I've been doing this many years. So, I will have some more realistic roses coming up in my other videos for different items, um, you know, as well as canvas painting, but I also do more real realistic designs on glassware, or dishware. Oops, here we go. But like I said, this is supposed to, this design is just supposed to be fun and whimsical. And that's all. There's not supposed to be anything in particular. See, you want to just bring it around. Tuck it under. I do them a little different, each one. Um, they're basically the same, but they have a slight difference. Just want to bring your little C strokes up and over. And this uh, looks kind of boring right now, but it really comes together once you get the blossoms and the leaves on. I like to do uh, some of the leaves in a uh, slight pink as well, just so it gets um, a fun little color. When you mix the green and the pink, it can make a beautiful shade. I've seen many people do it. You probably have two. This design, it works really well. Okay, you just want to make sure your edges are good and white, a little white, just to pop it out, you know. Your edges, or at least close to your edges. <laughs> uh, and the other main part is making sure that your inside has enough white that you can see where, you know, the blossom starts, or I mean the flower starts or stops. Like I said, this is a little awkward sometimes, upside down for me now. But uh, I think I'm going to keep doing it this angle so you can hopefully see it. Now if you find you've got too much, that's okay. I mean, like I said, just work with it. Go around it, wipe a little off. If you find it's too thick and heavy, some are going to be a little different. And if I really find I'm having a hard time getting a spot the way I want, like here, because I'm trying to do it upside down, 
I'll probably just cover it with some blossoms at some point in time. Once I cover it with blossoms, you won't, oops, keep that on my paintbrush. You won't really notice it at all. Like I said, hoping you can see this okay. For me, um, I don't have the best of the camera equipment or sound, as you can probably tell, and that's fine. I mean, myself, I like watching other people, and I find mostly just their style of painting or their personality is usually what draws me to their channels. And Better equipment and better view is, you know, a little nicer, but it's not the only thing that matters in a video, I think. There we go. I'm hopefully, hoping to get enough uh, oops, subscribers that uh, are views and likes and subscribers that I maybe can be monetized at some point in time. And I'd like to get a Patreon channel going. And I can get around to uh, getting some better equipment for this. I do have so many designs to show you. I'm really hoping to be able to continue to do this. It's fun for me. <laughs> and I think it'll be fun for you to try some of my designs. Oh. <laughs> There's my Etsy channel. Or a site saying I've got a view or a favorite or an answer or something. Oh, another favorite. Any Etsy sellers out there, they know the sound of cha-ching or eBay. Usually money. That one was not money, but it was a favorite. Okay, we're almost done this part. And like I said, it's a, I can do another video with this sped up if you'd like. Um, oh, this is an awkward uh, position. <laughs> there we go. One more. And like I said, we're also going to, oh, two more, going to be putting uh, blossoms over this so it gives it a whole different look. It's going to be filled in, put it that way. <laughs> Once it's filled in, it gives it a much oops, more finished look, obviously. Um, this right here looks uh, quite unfinished at the moment, because it is. But if you wanted to skip the blossoms, you could just... Um, basically just start with leaves and leaves of different sizes though you would want to make sure you have many different size leaves for this to work um, people they go around and they use just one leaf size and it's like that's okay say if you're well like this one gonna have blossoms and other things involved I'm just doing one other uh, flower with it you could do more but uh, but then in those situations the uh, the amount of um, leaves and the size, they don't matter as much. But if you're just doing the uh, roses and you're doing leaves, you definitely want to vary the size. Just a little info there. It'll uh, make your design look so much nicer. Oops. I really can't see what I'm doing much here, so we're just going to Wrap it up with a couple of little tiny sea strokes, and I think we're good. Don't worry about these little rough patches, they're going to be covered. Um, you're basically just trying to get some rose designs in there. Oops. Like I said, if anyone has suggestions for things they'd like to see, I would, you know. Or like to learn how to paint, I would, you know, definitely um, either show you designs I already have and tutorial them, or I'll come up with a whole new design, you know. I'm always looking for different ideas for my shop, like I said. Okay, so we're just going to go right into the white, pure white. And I'm just going to start um, doing some flowers here. They're just basic stroke flowers I'm doing. I'm not doing little violets or anything. This is just a, oops, I call it a stroke flower. I don't know. That's my name for it. But I'm going right over the rose, and as you see, there's some ridges of paint where it's thicker, and that's fine. I actually, I like the 
raised to look. I like my paints to have texture on my items. When I make birds, um, they usually have a textured feathers. Um, I, well, not usually, always. They have textured feathers and um, but raising things is fine. You just you have to make sure you give extra curing time. You don't want to just heat set it right away. I, I know the packages say, or the paints will say, oh, you know, in an hour you can, you know, be putting these things in the oven. I, I recommend not to because with this type of thing, um, even if you're not raising your feathers on something or whatnot, I find it's really, um, it's, it's, they just do so much better when they've cured for longer. You know, if you find your white is getting a little pink there <laughs> from going over your flowers like mine, just just uh, give it a little wipe or clean. Oops. But yes, I, I always give, like I said, extra, extra curing time uh, for all of my items I paint. Um, unless it's like a super rush, you know, maybe, but I always prefer to give it more time. I find that it adheres the paint much better, and uh, I don't have problems with it uh, through the years. Like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I'm just putting a couple little strokes here and there, just for filler. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and I have learned 100% that if you do not cure long enough, it can definitely affect the way the paint stays on. It doesn't matter how well you paint it, how, if you follow all the instructions properly, if, if, it's, if it's not cured before you heat set it, you could have issues. So, either, either way. Now these are like a, a blot, maybe similar to a daisy, I suppose, but not exactly. So I'm just going to put them in clusters. And put five petals on them, I guess, and um, let me see here. I like to do a little sprig here and there just to uh, finish it. And then here. And you're going to continue all around, as you can see. Uh, don't worry too much about if you're getting some pink in it, and don't worry about oops, discoloration. We're going to go over it again with white. It needs like one more. Oops. Go over with the white. And where are we have put some leaves there, I guess. And put some more white. As you can see, I've got this pretty thick, the white. Um, I don't mind it being thick at all. I'm going to clean it a bit. Get a little too pink here. Make sure your brush is nice and dry. Every time. Water is your enemy. <laughs> At least with this type of paint. It's not with a lot of others, but acrylic enamel is um, what I'm using, and it's definitely a a water heater paint. Any amount of water in there again could mess with your your design. It uh, may not keep it on. Or not keep it on as well, or, or maybe it won't last as long as it would have. I mean, that's a better way to put it as well. I'm going to put some, oops, see what I'm doing here. Put some side flowers, just like this, and then I'll have leaves behind them. Just to kind of give it a little finished touch. Because you want to have your blossoms, but you want to have some areas that are just... Small, small flowers. And it's always better if you don't go too matchy-matchy. If you've got something going on one side, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on the other side. It actually, like I said, ends up, oops, ends up being sometimes a nicer design when you just mix it up a bit. Okay. And, okay, let's we'll start with bigger flowers over here. 
I would love for you to comment and let me know if you painted this and if it turned out okay. What kind of things you like to paint? Um, I myself, I like flowers. They're fun. Trees, anything nature oriented, but yeah, you know, doesn't have to be that way. It can be a pretty well anything. When I'm painting these types of things, I find florals just really accent it nicely. I'm going to have to get a little more paint here. More white. Birds and butterflies are probably my favorite thing to paint on glassware and um, dishes and whatnot. I think that uh, I get some beautiful effects from them. And uh, for me, um, like I said, I like doing the raised feather look. And it's taken me a few years to kind of get uh, something that works really well, like that, you know. Um, but, like I said, just keep practicing and y you will get it, you know. I think a lot of people um, give up because they don't understand that, you know, things like that you have to have a second coat uh, to start. They, they just do the first coat and they find you can see through it and it doesn't look nice and, and they think they've done something wrong and it's like, well, they have. <laughs> they just, you know, they haven't put enough paint on, enough coats. I like to do uh, two to three base coats and that's basically what I'm talking about is the base coats. Base coats are definitely what will make the difference. Um, the ones on top are your base coats. You know, you don't have to worry about that so much. Like, like here with my flowers. These uh, have been done um, with, uh, you know, one or two base coats and just a, a bit of a... Uh, oops, where am I going to go here? Um, the second or the last layer is only one, one coat. And like I said, that's fine. As long as your base coat is okay, you're you're going to be all right. So let me see here. Yeah, that's good. Now again, like I said, we're going to need to go over the white. So now this, I want to make sure is white. I don't want to have pink come through this if I can help it, because I do want white flowers. So if I see any pink on my brush, I'm going to remove it. Now, for me, like I said, I, I like the raised look and there will be raised oops, petals here. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but it's there. <laughs> it gives the, the ridges, give it a nice raised look. Now, oops. Like I said, you don't want to uh, put too much paint on. There is a limit. But these, I'm going to smooth them out a bit. These will be okay. You definitely have to, especially if you're doing a thick coat like this, with the ridges in it. Again, that's, you know, where you need to be doing the curing really well before you put it in the oven. But it will be fine. If you cure it enough, um, I'm saying like they say an hour, I'm saying overnight or longer. Um, I find that the acrylic enamels are good that way, they'll, they'll adhere quite quickly, but as far as, like I said, the curing, you definitely need, um, you definitely need to cure it longer <coughs> for thick coats. Now there's many things I just do a lot of thin coats on, and not this, this type of, uh, painting. And with those, you know, you just let it dry in between and you're usually fine. These though, I want to do uh, the thick coats. It's my preference for the design. And also, this is for an order for a customer, so I have to do it the way it was seen in the picture. <laughs> or similar, like I said. I'll make sure I get lots of the water out of my brush here. I don't want water in there. Oh no, look at that. It's starting to blend. It's just too wet. 
have to come back to that. Oops. And again, like I said, you can see my ridges, but you want to smooth it out so that it's not super thick. You just want your edges to be thick. Now, you're welcome to not do it as thick, and it'll just be a, a softer look without the accents, I guess. Um, you know, that's all your preference. But for me, right now, with this design, it's what I'm doing. Oh, my stomach's growling. I'm starting to make dinner for the family. Yeah, let me see here. It really comes together once the leaves are there. They really give it the finished look. Um, and of course the center of the flowers. But I'm just trying to make sure I've got everybody done. If there's anything you're not really thrilled with, uh, you know, just overlap a leaf towards that direction. Um, it's not unheard of. If anybody watched Bob Ross, you know about happy accidents. And I think we all have many. Now, since I am trying to paint at an awkward position, um, I don't think things are quite as I usually do them, so I may... Oops, that's a little too much. I may cover some of my portions up with the uh, leaves, as I said. I don't want my customer to think it's, you know, not been done well. I'm going to make sure it still looks nice. And it's just switching the design up a little bit, that's all. Now, as you can see, oops, I'm smoothing some of these out. As I said, you want it thick, but there's a limit to thick. <laughs> Alright, I got a little carried away here. Um, I think most of them are fine, though. If you do find it's too much, you just kind of move your paint around. Just widen the uh, petal area. There we go. That's better. And as I said before, you can just use whatever blossom color you prefer. I mean, this is uh, one with white. But, um, this, with the, this color, the berry wine, it really complements with many colors. It doesn't have to be a specific one. It looks good with blues, it looks good with greens, it looks good with whites. You know, it's just the shade of it is just something that goes with pretty well anything, I find. It's, uh, oops. There we go. Almost done. It's a very versatile color. And again, you know, you take one color and you're going to alter it like we have. We made it lighter and darker and in the middle just by just by coating it darker first and then, you know, not as dark after. I mean, yeah, not as dark after. When you put your highlights on, you're already making colors. I hope I'm still doing this so you can see it. And... There. Okay, I think we've got everybody. I'm just going to go over anybody that looks too pink. But that's alright if there's a few. Yep, that's okay. So now, I'm going to actually go around and do some leaves. Now these leaves I will be doing um, definitely uh, probably one size, which will be fine for this. Because, uh, like I said, you've got lots going on already. If you didn't, if it were just the roses or just the blossoms, alter your leaves in their style and color. I'm just using this. It's a hunter green, I think. Yeah, and it's basic green. I'm gonna put a little white with it. And again, same idea. You know, a little white, a little green, just kind of smoosh together. Now I'm gonna smoosh it so they kind of blend into one color. And then just before I go on to the um, jug, I'm going to dip a little in each side. Just touch it on the paper plate to uh, make it a tiny bit less thick. But oh, no, I think we want a little more green. I want it to show up. Yeah. 
tip it below the weight. And we're going to, I'm just going to randomly go, uh, I'm going to randomly find the spots that look sort of empty. And these, again, you're going to go over it and uh, make sure they're thick enough as well. And these are just like a basic one-stroke leaf I'm doing here. I don't uh, have a preference to do this any different. And it's just press. Oops. Press and release into a little triangle here. You can also just do these uh, with the other method of just one side and the other side if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, the main thing here right now is I'm going to do just basic green and then I'm going to throw in some uh, green and pink leaves and that'll it'll set things off. It'll set a nice tone and it'll give it a look that's a little bit different than just the green. So it gives it a more elegant style to it. Now I'm just going in here, like I said, just kind of filling in leaves. Now the only thing you've got to do right here is just make sure you stay with your direction of your flowers and that you've got flowers going this way, you want your leaves going this way, and then we get to the other side, we'll wrap it around this way. At least that's how I'm doing this design. <laughs> and I want a little more definition on some of them. Some of them are just like the mixed color and then oops. And then some of them so I'm going to go over the flowers a bit too. And don't be afraid to cover up your design. You know, it just kind of gives it a, a different look. You want to, um, where there's a few little petals sticking out, you want to put a leaf or two right at the bottom, the base. And that'll kind of give it to the look it needs to look right. If you leave it on its own, it'll look funny. You just need something there to, uh, yeah, so you surround it. Same with here. I mean, wherever it is you see. Yeah, see, this one's got some already. And, um, there we are. We're getting to the end part. I'm just going to put one little one coming up there. Uh, maybe bring it two or three this way. And I think that's good for that side. And now we're going to come over here and this going too. Oops, I can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. I'm going to have to turn it for a minute. Yeah. And like I said, most of these leaves are going to be around the same size. Even though it may not look like it at the moment, there, there's a few scattered ones that are a little tinier. But overall, I, I think the look of this needs to be uh, about the same size. Nothing particular, but just to keep the design flow. And we're going to surround that little flower. Bring out a few more leaves. And oh, maybe right here. Here. There's a fine line between enough and too many. <laughs> so, you know, I always remember that. See, we're going this way. I mean, they're going to meet in the middle. And I'm probably getting a little heavy on the flowers right now, but I just feel they need that. Oops. Turn twist. Turn twist. Oh, yeah. I definitely need one here. And as I said, I'm going to go over these. And I'm going to wait until I place my um, um, pink ones, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I think I'll go over the green ones first. I'm lying. Change my mind. It's okay. Can do that. <laughs> now, depending on where you are, you might want to point your leaves a little different direction here, and that's okay. It's perfectly fine. And here, I've got 
buds and petals. So, and again, we're going to have pink in here too. So, what I'm going to do now, clean off my brush, give it a good, give it a good wipe down here. The last thing we'll be doing is the center of the white flowers. But I think you can see it's really starting to fill in already. And here we go. We're going to, again, do another coat over the green leaves. Now, all these things, um, like I said, are probably better if you let them dry in between coats. But it, it's not 100% necessary. If it's a, something that, you know, it takes me a while to get to the other side and back. So it's having a bit of drying time in between with this type of thing I'm painting. Uh, if it's a smaller item, you probably do want to give it some drying time if you can. I have some designs coming up where I have things partially pre-dried before I start showing you. Because <laughs> they just have to dry before the second part of the uh, design is on. Not everything is so in particular, though. So, um, I went a little bigger there. What you do want to try and do, though, is you want to basically try to stay kind of with the, uh, the leaf size you did. Like, you're going to go over them, and you're going to try to get pretty close to what you had. Doesn't have to be exact. Like I said, we're going to do uh, some pink leaves over top of these and whatnot. But, oops, a little boo-boo there. And you can also, when you're done, I always do, you can go around and see if there's any little smooshy marks you've made. Now, you're probably wondering why I haven't been holding the handle the whole time. It's just a habit. <laughs> habit of turning it and moving it, and sometimes it's just not so easy that way. So, here we go. And, alright, I'm going to just keep moving. But you can probably see there's a little more color now, and the second coat makes a difference on the leaves. It really does. You don't want to skip it. You don't want to uh, I'm try and do it different. I have my uh, old painting sweater on. <laughs> I'm a messy painter when it comes to painting my uh, glassware items and whatnot. I seem to just be so messy. I don't know why. When I paint my canvas paintings, I'm not messy at all. So I don't know what the difference is. I get yammering on here. Sorry. But, like I said, I will have some videos of this sped up without my voice. <laughs> if you don't want to listen to me. <laughs> uh, if you don't like me, don't leave a mean comment, please. <laughs> it's okay. There's other options. Oops. I have um, had my art in art galleries and sold in art galleries. And that's pretty exciting. Um, my canvas uh, paintings are something I'm very passionate about. Um, I just finished doing one. It's uh, two feet by four feet. That's a lot of work. Three horses. Beautiful, I think. Um, but it's a lot different than doing this, that's for sure. You know, you'd think, oh, this is, you know, so easy. This is probably the harder of the two. <laughs> you want to just uh, practice for a while. It doesn't always turn out, you know, as you might want. Like I said, it can be kind of fussy, the paint. Which way are we going here? Oh, I'm going here, this way. I almost went the wrong way, see? Well, I think I got all those ones. We're coming this way, and then, and then we're going to put in some pink flowers. I don't think we need to go over the pink flowers twice, so they they just need to be um, on there. Uh, they don't need to be so. Um, how do you say? They can be a little transparent, and they look fine with the transparent. It actually looks a little better when they're not done really thickly or colored in too well. Now, oops. I mean, everyone has their own way of painting or the way they 
like to paint or a look they want. You know, if somebody wants a different look, it's up to them. You know, these are things I think um, I've tried for a while. And with my different designs, I've learned what works better and what doesn't. So, you know, for me and the looks I'm wanting to go for. So, like I said, you may have a whole different look you want. And so doing it this way is not probably what you wanted. <laughs> So, again, you know, I always tell people, too, when they say, oh, what colors did you use? Or I always say, do you have any colors you've got you like? You know, if you don't have the same colors as me, it's okay. Make it your own. Use your own colors. It's not going to hurt it. It's just going to be colors that either you like or they blend with your house, you know, or whatever it is. So many people are, people are so fussy on uh, just making sure it's exact. And that's where you just got to kind of wipe my brush off here a bit. You just got to kind of go with the flow and have fun with it. If you're, hold on there. Um, if you're too fussy, then it becomes um, less enjoyable. I have to be fussy to a certain extent for my business. I have to make sure it's up to a certain standard and I have a certain look going. Um, maybe because I'm selling it and people are paying me money. And I've been doing this for many, many years. Um, but if it's something for myself, I don't think twice about just basically, you know, running with it. And as you can see, it's filling it. So now what I'm doing is I'm just getting like the green and the white and I'm dabbing some pink in there and it's just going to be a mushy rose color here and I'm going to wipe some off even and then I'm just going to go around oops, no I'm not, not unless I hold on to it I guess and um, you just make it the shade you like basically I uh, I like it with that kind of like a, a deeper rose color to it. Um, everyone's different, of course, with their preference. But this is what, oops, a little yellow in there, oops, that's all right. As I said, I, I don't, um, I don't want this to be too exact. I just want it to be a, hmm, an accent to the design. I'm not going to overtake it. It's going to be part of it. I am doing these a tiny bit smaller. Because I don't want them to take over. I want them to accent. And that is where the difference arises sometimes. If you enlarge something too much, then it takes over. Um, just like a, a flower. If you want to add, you know, an accent flower, well, if you're adding your flower is too big, then all of a sudden it's not an accent anymore and it's taken over your design. So you just want to put these in here and there. Uh, you know, it's not something that has to be specific. Just however you like it. But uh, I, I do recommend just um, kind of just bits and pieces to blend in. Or it will become overpowering and and it might not be what you wanted it to be <laughs> or what you envisioned. If you want to make one or two here and there a little bigger, it's fine. And I find they look nice and little you know, little pairs here. Um kind of gives it a good look. Uh, on their own, they become a little sparse. Um, so it's good to just add a few sometimes and uh, I like to put them at the base of the green leaves even just to give it a different look here oh, that's not too chiseled at the end there we go now and we are almost done now this is going to be curing for quite a while. Like I said, I uh, have uh, some thick paint on here. I definitely am curing it for a bit. Um, oops. The other point is, oops, here we go, sorry. I'm uh, getting paint all over myself. Like I said, I'm a very messy painter. But, you know, like I said, I like to cure everything.
quite well. That's what makes a difference in the quality of my work, I think. Um, I definitely uh, have perfect feedback on my sites. I have no bad feedback at all. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm patient and I let things cure so that they do come out as they're supposed to. It's, uh, oops, okay, these leaves are coming this way. So I'm just going to sneak a few in there. It's just a little thicker. As I said, you don't want things too thin. Too thin can cause as many problems as too thick. And this one is basically right in the flower, but that's okay. It's, uh, like I said, it's what you're going for. It's just a look, a, an accent. Feels like I need a little more red here. Yeah, there we go. Or berry wine, not red. Maybe you all confused here. Berry wine is a nice color as it can be, um, a nice pink, or it can, you know, as in here, or it can be a deeper, richer red. It's very versatile. It's got, a, like I said before, it's got a lot of things it blends with, and there's a lot of things it, uh, it just looks good to use for many different projects. Oop, there we go. I have to put this down. I'm hoping you can still see this okay. If not, I think that's all I can do about it right this second. <laughs> Oops. Let me cue a little bigger. See, some of my painting in here is screaming, you should let me dry. It'll be okay. And I've got leaves going this way. Quite a few. I think we're good with all them. What I can see. And in two minutes we'll be finishing up here. Okay. Now, I even find sometimes you'll have maybe rougher edges than you like maybe on a leaf that you had. And, you know, you just, again, cover it up if you need. This is a very forgiving design, so it's not something you have to worry about being too fussy with. It actually is just kind of all over the place, and it almost looks better when you don't um, concentrate so much. This is just a squish and lift method here. <laughs> and there we go. Oops. I'm just going to squish and lift until you got a little peak there. And, oops, like I said, right now you're able to wipe it off. I think pretty well done here. Yeah, okay. Maybe something, you just want to look around a little. See if there's any other areas. You can just squeeze a bit in. Like I said, a fine line between some and too much, so I have to watch myself. Oop, looks like I had a little accident there. I hit it with my finger or something. I could see the little indent. Yeah. Quick fix, so. Like I said, these are, it's very forgiving, and uh, the paint is very forgiving itself. Oh, there we go. I hit that one, too. Gee. You can wipe it off. You can restart if there's a problem, without a problem at all. Um, as long as you haven't heat set it. Once you've heat set it, it, it stays pretty good. So you want to make sure you get it right before that. <laughs> if you need to, uh, with lots of effort, you can get it off with a uh, nail polish remover. If you want to uh, actually get something off after it's heat set. Um, again, it can take a lot of work. <laughs> it's not always that easy. Some things, it's just like you got to get a chisel, I think, to get them off. It just, it's like the impossible dream. Okay, so I'm just going to um, get any brush. Just, just, this looks good. Not too long, not too short. It's just in the middle. It's got, it's not coming to a point. That's basically what I want. I want something that's just a little bigger, like a little round or something like that. And I'm just dabbing in, dabbing into my paint. And we're just going to fill in the center, just with a dabbing motion. Dab, dab, dab. These can be however big or small you want, I suppose. 
Um, I'm not going over these. They don't really need it. They'll be fine. There's a lot of paint underneath them to make them stay on really well. What you can do if you want is do like a little bit of a pulling up method and it gives a little point or ridge. But I think it's better just to just dab away. Make sure it's thick enough. And you want to go, oh, there's a spot I could have put a leaf. I think I'm going to go back and put one there. I guess that looks a little funny when you've got your petals coming out and nothing kind of coming behind it. You know, there's a lot of designs I do, like I said, that I just do out of my head. And then there's a lot of, a lot of other ones I have that are specific and they're designs I've made in the past and I've done them for many years, so I don't usually need much guidance with them. Uh, a lot of them I just have a, a basic uh, background. Maybe I'll put uh, underneath a glass inside and I'll paint from the outside so I can see um, where some things start or stop. Usually it's uh, for perspective or size. I'll use a, a little uh, pattern behind or or I'll also um, oops, I'll also use graphite if needed for some just to, you know, uh, like I said, either get a, uh, like if I'm doing more than one of something that needs to be the same size, or if I uh, just want a certain placement, or to remember, you know, where a wing bends or something. So usually what I do is like an outline, and I don't much bother much with the middle parts of my own designs, as I've done them for so long, I don't even think about it. Um, but... Let me make sure I get enough here. There we go. But I'm always coming up with new designs as well, which, you know, makes it fun. So you're just trying to get these in the middle. Don't, again, doesn't have to be exact. Let's make sure I got them all. I'm not going to bother doing these, I don't think. They're supposed to be little side petals. But any of the full ones, uh, oops, see, missed one. Any of the full ones, need to be done. Okay, so I am, like I said, I'm going to go back and actually fill in a uh, oops, leaf right here. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Maybe a little bigger than I wanted, but that's all right. There we go. A little wet there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of look over things and see if there's anything I want to alter or little spots I want to redo a bit. Um, like I said, I don't want these leaves to be really, really uh, dark, but a few of them need filling in and just um, a little bit of uh, tailoring, I guess as they may have little rough edges or, you know, something like that. This is your touch-up time for anything you're not sure about. That you may think is okay, but you're not sure if, you know, you're that pleased with it. With me, I'm pretty pleased with most of this. It's fine. Now, if you wanted, you could also finish this more with some small squiggly lines or, you know, something... Um, Little swirls, like, oops. I can't even think of the word right now, but anything you find you want to accent with it from here is, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with accenting it with anything from here. But you don't want to get too carried away because it's very busy already, and whatever you do should be either uh, not very dark or not very big if you're going to add to a design like this. So... Yeah, I think that's about it. I'm just going over re-chiseling a few of the flowers that are just not how I want them. Or I mean leaves. But overall, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're going to call this done. The other thing you might want to do is you look around, see if you've made any mistakes with it. Um, I know that I have paint. <laughs> all around my handle. Uh, there we go. 
See, you can just chip it off with your fingers right now, even though it's dried. But you won't be able to if it's cured. Is that this is not really an option. And if you can do this once it's cured, then it didn't cure right. <laughs> or I mean cured and heat set. You don't want to be able to. So, um, they say that this paint is top pass dishwasher safe. I recommend to people when you're using acrylic enamel that that you hand wash it. Um, just like for basic reasons, like when you go to Walmart and you buy something painted, it starts to wear off in the dishwasher. Uh, it it starts to fade. It either comes off, cracks off, or fades. And, you know, there's nothing that can be done about it, really. So that's why I think hand washing is better. And just, you know, a really, um, a really, uh, how do you say, a light washing. You know, warm, sudsy water. Don't leave it soaking. Soaking is not good for this paint. And, uh, oh my god, it on here. Uh, there we go. There we are. I'm standing straight. I was worried for a minute. Um, basically, with this type of paint, it needs uh, not to be soaked, I think, from experience. It needs to definitely have uh, just a quick bath in the water. That's the best way to care for it. So, like I said, I've got more painting videos coming up. Lots and lots, actually. Um, everything from, as I said, from... Um, Oops, yeah, spot there. Everything from painting glassware and jugs and uh, wine glasses, dishware, small and large canvas painting. Pretty well everything you can think of is coming up. So uh, please stay tuned and um, come back. Uh, it be wonderful if you like and uh, subscribe. Uh, again, please like and subscribe. <laughs> and if you want to see any of my work where I sell, it's at canadiancreations.etsy.com or lepayart.etsy.com or artcreations.etsy.com. And I'm on Facebook as well, under Canadian Creations. Um, yeah, feel free to like any of my work or please comment. I would love to hear your comments. Um, I like to hear what other people do or think. So... Uh, have a great day. Bye.